replica. Some people call it Frankenstein. I call it my baby. People have a lot of questions, and the guitar has always been a, a source of fascination. Kind of an enigma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the same damn guitar. It's on the first record when it's black and white. People don't, don't uh, think about that. No, a lot of people don't know. There's a black and white and a black, red, white one. But it's the same, same guitar. Yeah. yeah. It's a fascinating subject. It's a fascinating guitar because it just, people are crazy about it. I know. I have a couple questions that I I've, that I've want to ask you and sort of give people a, uh, an insight. When did you build this guitar? Oh, uh, 74, I think. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Oh, I was looking to, uh, if you notice an old picture, it had a Gibson sticker on it. Yeah, I've seen those yeah. pictures. Yeah, I don't know where I got that sticker, but that was the perfect thing, because what I was trying to do was cross, a, you know, cross-pollinate <laughs> a Gibson with a Fender, mm -hmm. because I loved the vibrato bar. And this was way before Floyd. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And... Oh man, if I go into detail about how he used to keep that damn thing in tune, that would be a whole nother film. Uh, you know, at the time, nobody built their own guitars. What made you, what I made you want... Money. I didn't have the money, and the guitar that I wanted to play did not exist. It was that simple. Right. Yeah. There's actually Boogie Bodies who, who supplied Charvel with the body and the neck. And I go out there, they were out, uh, you know, San Dimas way. Oh, never forget, there's, there's a body laying at the bottom. I'm going, what are these? And I go, oh, those are seconds. And I didn't know what that meant. They were raw, unfinished? Yeah. yeah. Just stacked it's up? just a piece of wood, you know? And, but they called them seconds. I'm going, oh, so that means they're, they're next in line to be manufactured. No, 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 that means they got a knot in the wood. Cosmetically, they were not attractive. I'm going, well, I'll take one of those. Because I don't care if it's got a knot in it, you know? Right. And uh, the body cost me 50 bucks, and then that cost me 80. Was it as simple as, you know, you had guitars be before this with a humbucker that you liked and a Strat you were comfortable with? What was the process like leading up to saying, I'm going to... Because it, it was a moment for electric guitar in itself, the, the cross-pollination of, of a humbucker in a Strat-style yeah. body. Uh, you know, what, was there something that led up to that, or was it just not that I, uh, not that much of a thought process? Like everything from sticking a, a humbucker into paraffin wax in a U-Band coffee can <laughs> and pulling out just in time before the sucker melted. I'm a tone chaser. Right. I love chasing tone, and uh, that's the only way I could get the sound. And I always mainly just use the rear pickup because this stuff isn't even hooked up. Right. You know, it doesn't do anything. A lot of what I do is is really trial and error, mm -hmm. you know? But I do know what, where I want to get, you know? And Did sometimes I ruin a lot of stuff getting there. <laughs> Once you had the body and the neck and knew that you were put, did you put the guitar together the, uh, right away? Um, you know, the, the funny thing is, the black and white stripes, which was on the first Man Allen record, I don't know what made me think of that at all. I was just looking for something different, but I really wasn't looking. I mean, even the pick guard on the first record, I cut out myself. That was not a fender. No. Yeah, I made that myself. You know, I'm like, <laughs> with yeah. a pair of scissors uh -huh. and a soldering iron just to, to get the edges smooth. Once you had the, the elements, did you did you put it together right away? Or? Yeah. Yeah? It didn't take more than a couple of days, you know. What were your first impressions after you had it together? Oh, it was kind of fun. Yeah? Yeah. It was kind of a culmination of, of years of putting around and everything kind of ended up in this guitar. Did you feel like you were onto something? Yeah, well, I, I mean, for me, I, I, I wasn't looking for for anything to sell or to uh, to please other people. There's just nothing was out there that I wanted. And that was my motivation, basically. Okay, I want something I want that works for me. Mm -hmm. No locking nut. No locking nut. The whole first record. Yeah, Stock did, Fender tremolo. This guitar. With, with no Floyd Rose, you know, yep. locking nut. 
And people were just dripping around. I don't know the fuck to keep that thing in tune. But it's all process of elimination and and making sure everything's lined up. And Straight string pull. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I used to even take the guitar string through the block in the back, and with every turn, I would hold the string and turn it with it. So that the, the string yeah. didn't twist. So exactly. And straight, smooth, and I used to put it through the tuning peg and, and line it up, not down. So that it was straight into the, the peg yeah. instead of uh, and so the break angle. If you look at old stuff, I always have to keep my hand there because if you hit the string too hard, it would pop out of the nut. And then I put three and one oil in the brass nut and the grooves were bigger than they were supposed to be, but that's the only way it would slip and slide. Kind of like a Mazzola party. You, you know? tricked it out. Yeah. yeah. But tricked it out for myself. Right, for performance. Yeah. But you yeah. figured a way to, yeah. to tweak and, and, and uh, trick it out. Well, you, know, you know me well enough that I trick everything out. To your spec, to yeah. what works for you. Whatever works for me. Uh, do you remember what inspired you to paint the stripes? I don't have a clue. It just happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I, just, I just took... Uh, I'm going, okay, it needs paint. And for some reason, I just grabbed masking tape, and I just started rolling it around on it. And then I, I painted it black first, and then I taped it for some reason I don't know, mm -hmm. and put tape on it. And then I spray it, uh, spray painted it white, and I took the tape off. And then I used rubbing compound to smooth it out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, it looks kind of neat. Yeah, it does. I mean, you can still kind of see it underneath the original, sure. you know stuff that's on the first record but it certainly wasn't uh, a, a corporate uh, manufactured <laughs> it wasn't scientifically no. derived at in any way it was just like pretty much everything i do it just it's kind of a mistake the, you know the guitar black and white is super famous but the guitar with the, I almost top, wish I, with I know. the top coat of red see that's what's funny is even more famous i know and every time I look at it, I go, God, I wish I would have left it black and white yeah. with the pick guard. But then again, this is more famous. It took on a life of its own. Yeah. It's you know beyond. I mean? Yeah. It's beyond. It, it just took a, on a life of its own. How soon after the black and white coat? Because I'm pretty sure you did the first tour black and white with it black and black white. Black and white, yes. Where did the red coat come into play? Uh, after yellow and black. The yellow and black strap. Oh, I hassled with that guitar forever, man. The yellow and black the, strap. The original yellow and black. It, uh, we buried dime bag with yeah yeah because that was the real one. Oh yeah yeah oh, yeah um, you know, rest in peace dime bag so that's when i went back to this guitar because it just sounded better felt yeah better, did what you wanted it to do and i said okay let me change it up a little bit you know so this is this is the original guitar let, let me grab a replica real yeah. quick this is going to blow your mind it's something i've always wanted to do this is the shit. You know what I mean? Do you love it? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, it feels better than the real baby. No kidding. That was, that was my last question, <laughs> yeah. so you just knocked it out. It really, and it sounds better. What were, what were your first impressions when you, when you first well, okay. saw this guitar? Come on. It's like probably the first time in my life that somebody handed me something. Chip Ellis handed me a guitar that just freaking blew my mind. Yeah? It sounds better than the original. It feels better. And the cat just blew my fucking mind. So maybe people can look forward to seeing you play the record. Oh, yeah. In, in, in Come on, you even got the ashes and cigarette burns, you know? It's like, the cat's insane. My favorite part is how, how they all have a 1971 quarter. Yeah, I'm just saying it's got the extra hull. Right. Because it used to be right. shifted over to put underneath here. And then I just filled another hole because I didn't need it anymore. But... So this is going to be... He a nailed thing. everything. Yeah, it's, a cr it's crazy. Yeah, it is. And it's the, crazy. And the, the writing on it... Look what I wrote. The writing <laughs> this on it... This is the shit. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, it sounds better. better. Original. Oh, man. It's a chip. And What'd you, you do to me? And you just love it. I do. I do. Take three. More, 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 folks. So I want to introduce everybody to uh, the man responsible for this amazing recreation of Ed's most famous number one baby guitar, and that is Chip Ellis. Chip is a 
guitar builder for Fender Musical Instruments, the parent company to the EVH Guitar Company. He's done an amazing job and I thought it'd be really good to get insight from Chip's perspective on, on the guitar. If you don't mind, I'm going to pepper you with some questions. And Please do. How did you come into this project? Well, the project came down the pipeline and I was the only one at Jackson and Charvel that had done any relic guitars, so I snatched it up before anybody else could get their hands on it and just did my thing. Yeah. Really got into it. What went through your mind when you knew that you were going to be in charge of creating this, this replica? It absolutely flattered me because this, this guitar is what got me in the guitar playing. So it was like everything I had been working for had just come full circle. So you were a fan of Ed's music and his guitars previous to this project? His music is what got me into this. How long, when was the first time you heard Van Halen? 1984 album. Yeah. I wore it out. I bought it on tape. I wore that out. Changed your the life? The first CD I ever bought when CDs came out was 1984. Changed your life? Changed my life. This man and, and this guitar. And you, and you, you play as well. You have a, mm -hmm. You've been playing since you were a kid? Mm hmm So, I mean, aside from... I think ooh. he needs to be able to play in order to do what he did. Oh, I think so, too. Yeah. It helps when you're a guitar builder to play it. Was the, was, was, was the impression that you got from Van Halen or Van Halen music, was it guitar first and then you became interested in the building process or were you, were you interested in the building process uh, early on or how did that you know, work? It, it was early on I got into it. The first guitar I bought was an Area Pro 2 Les Paul copy and I tore it apart and I spray painted it and was constantly messing with it. I think that there was an aspect that, that, that Ed was putting out there in the world where everybody like it wasn't just enough to be a player but you had to fuck with your guitars you too at the same to, time you, you know it was, it was cool to. it was mm -hmm. cool Ed made it cool did Ed inspire the way you build guitars at all or, or did, did he really provide an impetus to become a builder a little bit of both his his technique and building you know make it work for yourself you know, just go at it, whatever it takes. I mean, uh, you told me that you chiseled this out, right? Yeah, yeah, man. Well, look at it. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of did the same thing. pro job. <laughs> I, I would take guitars and just, just destroy them, you know, just yeah. trying to get what I want. And then as I exactly. learned, on, you know, how to work on guitars and got better at building and everything, then I started making them a little more polished and... Well, how did you go about building the guitar? What was what was the process like? You've got you've got the project now. It's yours. You know, you're 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 going through a, a thought process. You know, when you actually got to a table. This and is got, what I want to know. How did I, you do it? I absolutely geeked I mean, he, out on he it. Even got the damn reflectors that we bought at a truck stop, and because at the end of the show, when when the whole VH logo came down. I'd go <laughs> like that. Yeah, shoots a Did prism out over the yeah, crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, where the hell did you find these damn things? That was a lot of research. I found <laughs> <laughs> it, to put it uh, mildly. It, it took a long time. I tried to find the original manufacturers, uh, one of which had gone out of business. So it it, it was kind of tough finding the exact reflectors. But the we did it, and like, I spent months, you know, just going through it, yeah. looking at every picture I could find of the guitar, Wait. just dissecting every little screw hole, every, you know, piece it's of crazy, flaked man. off finish. You, you call it a geek out. It's a I, geek I, out I, process. Yeah, I just picked it apart, probably further than anybody should pick anything apart. I mean, I, I just wanted to nail every little detail on the thing, and, and I did the best I did. could. That you did, even down to the screw holes, to what the tuning pack. Well, I mean, what? You know, I had so many different tuning pegs in this guitar, even now not. The thing for me that, that blows me away more than anything about what you did is that you did this without that guitar. Without you did the, the entire thing from you photographs. Did. You, did. you never had the real guitar to base the thing off of. Mm -hmm. that, that's just mind blowing to me. Yeah. Well, I had a bunch of photographs and like I said, I was zooming stuff in and just, like I said, geeking out on it. What do you do from a photograph? It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. I mean, I just did the best I could, but I, I, I had grown up with this guitar, though. I mean, I had pictures of this hanging on my wall as a kid, you know? I, I, I did just too. knew this guitar inside and out. It was a part of my life coming up, you know? That's so special, you know? And, and like yeah, I said I earlier... It's part of both of ours. It's yeah. a part of all of ours, yeah. you know? It was. It was part of a lot of people's lives, and it just, like I said, once I got to working on this, it just felt like everything had come full circle. It was such an honor. How did you feel? after you talked to Ed, because you weren't with the guitar when the guitar got delivered to Ed, mm -hmm. but once, you know, Ed had seen the guitar and called you and you knew that he was happy and excited with the guitar, you know, how did that make you feel? It blew my mind. It was, it was a great day. 
It really was. That's a day to remember in your life. Definitely. Yeah. A pivotal moment. I'm as impressed as anybody could be. I, I, you've done yeah. a, you've done a I'm so, amazing. I'm sitting here playing a replica, and it feels better than the real one. There's just so much detail and 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 so much that went into building this guitar, and it's so exciting. It's one of the most famous guitars in rock and roll history. It'll be an icon. A hundred years from now, people will know exactly what it what, what it is mm. and what it was. And you know, I'm just glad it was you. And I just think it's fantastic how how happy Ed is with it. I have one question for both of you guys. Yeah. Um, so have you ever confused the replica with the original? Yes. With, really? That's why I wrote this on the back. <laughs> <laughs> so we you, have a picture <laughs> sitting on the tailgate yeah, yeah, of my yeah, car. Yeah. We're yeah. all yeah. looking at three of them at once, wondering which one's which. They're amazing. Yeah, Dana. Well, thank you both for sitting with me and uh, and answering I'll some questions. You.